Welcome to Settle 3D version 4, tutorial 3. In this tutorial, we will be creating and analyzing a storage tank on an embankment. To begin, if you have not already done so, run Settle 3D. A new document will open with the program. We will begin by modifying the project settings. Open the project settings dialog from the toolbar and ensure the general tab is selected. Define the stress units to metric, stress as kilopascals, and the settlement units to meters. Select the time-dependent consolidation analysis checkbox. You will be notified that the groundwater analysis option will be turned on because it is required for consolidation analysis. Click OK. Set the time units to days and permeability units to meters per day. Next, select the stages tab. Set the number of stages to 13 and fill in the stage times as follows. Click OK to close the dialog. We will now add a piezometric line. In the groundwater menu, select the Add Piezometric Line icon. Set the water table depth to 2 meters. Click Select All to assign the piezometric line to all soils. Click OK. Next, to add the embankment, select the Embankment Load icon. Set the base width to 200 meters and all angles to 8 degrees. Change the height to 7 meters. We will leave all other parameters as their default values. Click OK. To place the embankment's near point, click on the plan view or manually enter coordinates 0, negative 125, then enter. Next, enter 0, 125 to place the far point. We will now model the storage tank by adding a circular load. Select the Add Circular Load icon. Change the circle radius to 32.5 meters and the load magnitude to 230 kilopascals. Since the loading will be changing with each stage, check the advanced staging checkbox and enter the load factor data as follows. Enter the depth as negative seven for all stages. Click OK. Place the load in the plan view by clicking in its desired location or by entering the coordinate 0, 0 in the prompt line. Cycle through stage tabs to see the load changing. We will now assign soil properties to the model. Select the Define Soil Properties icon. For each of the first three materials, turn on Immediate Settlement. Change the primary consolidation material type to Linear. Enter data for the first three material types as follows. Turn on immediate settlement for the fourth material type. Set the primary consolidation soil type to nonlinear. Enter data as follows. Leave all other parameters at their default values. Click OK. To define the thickness of the soil layers, select the Define Soil Layers icon. Insert three layers below the first. While material types can be changed by clicking on the name, we will use the default material assignments. Set the sand fill layer to 2 meters, the silty sand layer to 8 meters, the dense silty sand layer to 20 meters, and the silty clay layer to 50 meters. Set the drainage conditions by selecting Drainage Conditions. Select the Drained at Bottom checkbox for the dense silty sand and the silty clay layers. Click OK. We will now create the field point grid. Select the Auto Field Point Grid icon. Set the number of grid points to 500 and the expansion factor to 1.2 and click OK. Stress and settlement are automatically computed throughout the three-dimensional volume and total settlement contours will be shown. Under the contour legend in the sidebar, you can see that the maximum settlement is 4.17 meters. Visualize this displacement using the deformed contours checkbox. Rotate the model to view results by clicking and dragging in the 3D view. Use the depth controller to visualize contours at different depths. In the toolbar at the top of the screen, you can change the data type being plotted. Turn off deformed contours and reset the view by right-clicking and selecting Reset View. To obtain results at specific locations, you can add query points or query lines. These allow you to graphically plot data versus depth or horizontal distance at specific locations in the model. 
To add a query point, select the Add Query Point icon. Leave the default setting of Automatic and click OK. To specify query location, click the mouse at the center point of the circular load. To add a query line, select the Add Query Line icon. Leave the number of horizontal divisions at the default value of 20. This time, select Evenly Spaced Divisions and change the number to 30 and select OK. Select the existing query point to place one point there, then enter the coordinates 150, 0 into the prompt line to place the second point. Click and drag in the 3D view to better visualize query results. Deselect the query line checkbox and then the query point checkbox to view the queries one at a time. Plot query point data by right-clicking on the query and selecting graph query. Set the plot type to data versus stage time and select total settlement. Click OK. As expected, the amount of settlement increases with time as more load is applied and the clay layer consolidates further. Note that the apparent steps in the total settlement are due to the computation of immediate settlement followed by the consolidation settlement at each stage. Toggle back to the plan view. Plot query line data by right-clicking on the query and selecting graph query. Keeping the plot type as depth versus data, select total settlement and select all of the stages, then click OK. You can see the total settlement along a line at the ground surface. Tile the windows so they are side by side. Use the depth control sidebar to change the depth of the line, which will be shown in all views. You can also change the data being plotted using the pull down menu at the top. Note that you will need to change the data type in both the plan and chart views. This concludes the storage tank tutorial. Click here for more details or here for more tutorials.